hello everyone uh, welcome back to my channel so in this video we are going to discuss three OAuth flow uh, which can be used inside Salesforce and the most importantly I'm going to discuss the JWT OAuth flow and on my website or oh sorry on my github account if you are following me this is the name of the repository and if you are not following me I would suggest to follow so that you would be updated by all my latest repository so uh, this is my github account uh, if you navigate here I have 30 plus repository and there are many repositories which are liked by many community members so I appreciate it so let's go back on the J JWT demo JWT stands for JavaScript web token and see how we can uh, implement it so for that uh, I have created a node.js application and the reason I have created this project is like uh, I have went through a lot of documentation uh, about how the JWT works but as I have not seen that in action it was very hard for me uh, to visualize basically how exactly the JWT works so let's see JWT in action so this is a small node.js application first and foremost important stuff here is like I am creating a HTTPS server so to create an HTTP server you have to provide an option in node.js application and options are nothing but the public key and the certificate so uh, to generate a key and certificate you can go to my previous article on my blog which is a uh, how to use a lightning out you can use this search box to search the lightning out to come to this article and this section basically explains that how we can use an open SSL certificate to create a server certificate and a key so let's assume that you are able to create a certificate and key the next step would be writing a node.js application and in node.js application I'm using some of the modules like I'm using express framework and very important stuff is like I'm using NJWT so I have gone through lots of modules uh, of the node.js application where uh, I should be able to use the JWT but I got success only by using NJWT uh, there are many other frameworks as well uh, which suggest uh, that JWT can be done uh, very quickly and efficiently but I was not able to, I was not able to succeed so this is what this is this was what I say like fourth or fifth module which exactly I got working so let's see how exactly it works so before going on how the JWT work let's try to understand what are the components of the JWT so uh, if you run uh, this application on this third section I have provided uh, the link of this tool and this tool is here so JWT consists of the two part header part and the payload so header part basically already handled by the module of node.js but this payload is also known as a claim and we have to su uh, supply some claims which is uh, prerequisite by the Salesforce and if you go on Salesforce documentation uh, the list of the claims would be available so this is actually the method I have in node.js which creates a claim and if I scroll down here basically what I'm doing is I'm providing four claim one is I'm providing the consumer key of my connected app so just for your uh, information this is my connected app if I go here uh, so I have a connected app nothing fancy all like uh, only thing I have done is like I have selected the JWT section here and I have selected the callback URL so let me try to edit it so here uh, uh, API says OAuth so here I ha this is the actually difference here you have to upload the certificate which you have created and once you upload this certificate this OAuth would be considered as a JWT flow and this certificate would be actually used to decrypt the token which we would be sending the sales for so say, what we are doing is like uh, we are starting our node.js with this public key and this public key would go to this Salesforce and Salesforce will use this certificate to basically uh, decrypt the data so this is only difference so once you have connected app uh, working with you next step is uh, our node.js application so index.html is a landing page and basically three flows has been implemented here as you can see three section user agent auth flow web server auth flow and the JWT auth flow
and for each flow I have two buttons so basically overall I have to handle the six button three for production and three for sandbox and that is the reason jQuery code is here written and saying that what would be happen on the clicking of the buttons so uh, these two buttons are basically uh, web server OAuth flow these two buttons are the JWT flow and these two buttons are user agent OAuth flow now if we check the user agent OAuth flow let's try to say here so this is a user agent OAuth flow one of the simplest OAuth I can say only thing you have to provide is like you have to provide the Salesforce URL which is either login or test with OAuth authorize and then you have to pass client ID you have to give the redirect URL and you have to say the response type is token now make sure that this callback URL is exactly same which you have uh, defined here in your uh, connected app so once everything goes fine uh, you would be able to get the response so I would come back exactly after the exec uh, how to execute it but let's go on the second part uh, which is the section of web server OAuth flow uh, we are basically hitting the D WS OAuth flow so if I go on WS OAuth flow so oh sorry so first we have to hit the authorize link once we hit the authorize link uh, we would get a response and once uh, we get the response then we have to initiate basically WSO auth so that's the uh, two-step process unlike in uh, previous so once you get a response we have to use the same response uh, so here it says that uh, we have to use client ID we have to use a redirect URL response type we have to say code and state basically what exactly is happening here is like once in a uh, web server flow when we use this URL uh, we are we go back on OAuth callback .html and this is the HTML page which only con uh, contains the JavaScript and uh, basically uh, every time we are checking does that URL contains the state so if we go on WS OAuth we can see that I have also pass the state and this parameter is uh, kind of the identi identification parameter and we get back as it is it from the Salesforce so right now I'm saying that WS state uh, its state is WS OAuth okay and if it's a sandbox it's a WS OAuth sandbox so it will help me to differentiate basically what exactly has been initiated so once I send this Salesforce will validate it and Salesforce will send it back to this page OAuth callback so if I go on my connected app setting I can see that callback URL is OAuth callback .html, which is nothing but this page and I am checking that does any of the response contain state yes or no so as we can see uh, we are getting the state only I mean we have three flow out of three flow we will get a state only in one flow so yes I got it that we are getting state that means it's a web server flow so if we are getting a state then redirect to WS OAuth callback and pass exactly the same code so see exactly what happened here we use WS OAuth for the web server flow we hit this URL this URL Salesforce authorize everything username password we came back on this page it check does it has a state yes because we have provided the state uh, that's our custom value to identify basically it's which flow and once we get a state we are doing simply okay redirect it again to the new URL which is our internal URL WS OAuth callback with the same code which we got from the Salesforce so basically once we hit the authorize code it is sending us a code so we have to use the same code and we have to again go back to the Salesforce now this time we have to hit the token URL not authorized URL so token URL is a final URL by the Salesforce which gives us exactly the access token which can be used to connect to the Salesforce so I see so this code was exactly passed back again from the OAuth page I came back here I use the same code now this time I'm saying grant type is authorization code I need authorization code now because previously I wanted a code I got a code now I want authorization code I am providing again client ID client secret and the redirect URL and the, the most important part is I am using the post method right now unlike user agent flow we are using a get but here it's a post and that's it once I get a response uh, I'm checking does is, is there any error if there is no error then simply I'm saying uh, setting the location as a main so it will go on the main page 
so uh, that's all about a uh, web server OAuth flow it's a little bit trickier so again uh, just a short recap what exactly is happening once we click on either of these button th this method of the node.js would be invoked we are using authorized URL once everything goes fine on the Salesforce end we would come back on the OAuth callback page and once we are on this page it checks do we have a state back from the Salesforce if yes then we are going back again on WS OAuth callback now in this case we are hitting the token URL and we are uh, we are able to access the Salesforce. So let's see exactly how. Uh, let's see its action. So here I am on web server auth flow. I am clicking on the production. Uh, it's asking me basically to log in. So I am logging by my one of the URL, my login. And once I'm logging, it's a basically connected app. So asking me for the permission. So I'm saying okay, let's allow it. So see basically exactly what happened at the background. It first went back on OAuth callback page and that is the reason you have must have seen H1 uh, extracting token. So that page now in the JavaScript checks did I get a state back? It says yeah I got a state back then at the back end server.js again went to the Salesforce and this time it went to Salesforce by this URL and it used this client ID it used the code what it got it now this time everything went as a parameter body. so this parameter body is nothing but the part of the request itself it's a method is post and once I got so this is the page and I can validate is it running fine or not so I can just enter and I can see I got a response and this is actually the record from my uh, uh, Salesforce instance where I it has been authenticated so that's how the web server flow works it's a little bit tricky but we got a working code so if you go on my git repository just focus on these two method so WS OAuth step 1 OAuth callback this section is step 2 once we get a code we go back on the token URL this is step three and the final step and that's it we are done with the web server flow now the user agent flow is very very easy like uh, if I go back here it's doing nothing but it's directly hitting the authorized URL and that's it uh, you don't have to uh, go on the token URL so basically in this step uh, we are going for the authorize and we are saying grant I need a code as a response type but the difference here in the user agent is saying I don't need a code I need a token as a response type directly and that's it the advantage of the web server flow is like web server flow is a lot secure uh, than the user agent flow and that is the reason I mean as an enterprise application you should always consider the web server flow so web server flow is done user agent flow is done we already discussed a little bit about the JWT but uh, let's try to see I need to let's say use a JWT f on my this instance and I have not authenticated this instance yet so if I click here production so this is the error most of the time we get when we try to implement the JWT and the error says that user has not approved this consumer that means the user has not approved this app and basically it is happening because JWT flow is a little bit different than the OAuth flow or the web server flow in the sense that you have to approve the connected app which you are using for the JWT by some other OAuth flow initially it doesn't make it doesn't make sense to me as well that if for one OAuth I have to use another OAuth then what is the sense of using the JWT OAuth now the advantage here is like once you get it working then it can be run as an automated process no manual intervention would be needed here so let's see exactly how JWT work so in my node.js application so first go on index dot ht and this is the last part of the JWT button name is this and this button is going on JWT URL if I go on JWT URL here at the top so now here again I am hitting a token URL directly unlike web server flow we are hitting the authorized URL and then the token URL now in this I am directly hitting the token URL and in the token URL I am passing my payload of JWT so this is the payload basically which have and which like we already discussed this is the method which computes the payload and 
payload is also known as a, a JavaScript claims or JSON claim and it consists of your key, your username, URL of the server and the expiration date of the token and we have to encrypt it. Now encryption is very important here. We have to encrypt here in our Node.js and at the Salesforce site in connected app we have provided this digital certificate. Now the same digital certificate we'll use to decrypt it. So we are encrypting at our end and we are taking the this is how we have to decrypt basically I'm saying that the encryption algorithm is 256 so when I say the create njwt.create basically njwt module of the node.js automatically generating the header part and payload anyways we have already provided and using the compact method it says that let's encrypt it and then I'm converting it to the base uh, 64 basically so here I have a token I have compacted it, it returns base64 to me I am going back here so let's go back at the top so I have my encrypted token so again just to summarize I'm sure it's a little bit confusing here but uh, very simple if you think in a way like uh, this is the website basically normally which I used so you have to provide the payload payload is a claim and then we clay, this payload has to be in the format of JSON once you get the JSON in a working format here so I have my JSON I have created my JSON now I'm encrypting it to encrypt also it's very easy you have to give the your key path and uh, and then you have to give your certificate part basically and NJWT would do all your heavy lifting so once done once encrypted uh, let's go back here so the token is encrypted one important part is like again we are using a post method here we have to say that uh, grant type is this urn ift params JWT and assertion so in assertion basically we have to provide the encrypted token which we have just uh, encrypted and uh, so this parameter would be passed as a part of the body and once we make a request either we will get an error or we will get a response so once I get a response I can simply I again redirect to the main page and I can provide the to I can set a cookie basically with the token API version URL and everything so once I set a cookie on main I have a on main.html so if I go back here and if I go on views I see main.html here already and main.html basically using main.js so if I go back here on the JavaScript main.js so on the main.js you can see that I am using the jQuery cookie plugin and I am checking do I have a token API version and instance URL so that's all has been set, and set up by this method here so let's try to see how no uh, JWT works so again let me give you an error so this is JWT this is the username but this user has not validated my connected app this connected app yet and JWT will fail so it failed that's fine that's how it's expected to work now let's try to validate the same app using user agent flow or the web server flow so I'm going back let's try to log in here and the same I am the same username now and I have very so JWT is the name of connected app so it's working fine so user agent worked I am able to validate my connected app now let's try here so here I have let's try awesome so here I am able to use a JWT flow so if I run limit when it's working fine so that's all I hope uh, I am able to explain the basic difference between the JWT and uh, other OAuth flows which is a uh, user agent flow and uh, web server OAuth flow